Hello and welcome back. If you've watched the last episode, you'll know that I've ended up in a little mining town called Cobar in the middle of Outback New South Wales. And today I'm going to continue my journey westwards. At this point, it's starting to get really quite remote. So the next town westwards is Wilcanio, which is 260 kilometers west of Cobar. And as I mentioned last time, Wilcanio has a bit of a bad rep to it. So my plan was to keep my visit to Wilcanio as short as possible, and to spend the night in a tent uh, somewhere along the highway. One thing that I very quickly discovered is that there's wild goats roaming around everywhere. I was really quite surprised at this, um, because I've never seen a wild goat in Australia before, and here I am with literally hundreds of goats around me. Turns out these goats are an invasive species, and they're the most prevalent in western New South Wales, which is exactly where I'm riding through. And it's been estimated that there's around 5 million goats in this area. The other thing that really surprised me is that although on the satellite imagery, the area around here looked very red, a lot of the areas that I rode through actually were quite green. So maybe there's just been a, a lot of rain recently? That would kind of make sense given that the blue skies I encountered in the morning did not last for very long. A bit past lunchtime, I made it to Wilcanio. I talked to one of the locals and she told me that things were actually much better now compared to a couple years ago. But in any case, I decided not to linger for too long. I only took a couple of photos and decided to keep going. And because I arrived at Wilcanio quite early, I thought I might actually have a chance at going all the way to Broken Hill today. After another 200 kilometers on the road, I finally made it to Broken Hill. And let me tell you, what a nice feeling it was to finally be in a relatively large town with everything that you need nearby. I had a little bit of a celebration when I saw my first traffic light after about a thousand kilometers. Anyways, I decided to spend the night at a campsite a couple kilometers away from the city center. A fun fact about Broken Hill is that although it's part of New South Wales, it actually observes Australian Central Standard Time, which is the time zone used in South Australia. Now, the reason for this is that when the Australian states adopted Standard Time, Broken Hill's only direct rail link was with Adelaide, not Sydney. So although Broken Hill was physically part of New South Wales, its economic livelihood was tied to South Australia.
Right next to where I stayed were a series of sandstone sculptures. These sculptures, which were built in 1993, were made from giant sandstone blocks weighing over 50 tons that were shipped from the Vulcania region. One place that I had to visit on my trip to Broken Hill uh, is this painting named The Big Picture. This is the world's largest canvas painting by one artist. It measures 100 meters in circumference and it's 12 meters high at its highest point. It paints a majestic scene of the Australian outback, and right in the middle, you can see the sculptures that I just visited. In the middle of the city, and built on top of the body of all containing the silver, lead and zinc that made fortunes in, in the city, is a memorial dedicated to the over 800 lives that were lost through the mines. The names, age and cause of death of each of the miners who perished are etched into these glass panels. It's a very sad and solemn experience. But I soon left the memorial, only to be stopped at the Broken Hill Railway Crossing. I spent half an hour waiting there, with that warning tone blaring incessantly in the background, watching these two blokes fiddle around with the train track. And at the end of it all, I guess they must have given up trying to fix the track, because the gates lifted without the train having passed through at all. It was a fantastic use of my time, especially because the sun had started to go down. And so by the time I reached my campground for the night, which was in the town of Silverton, about 20 kilometers northwest of Broken Hill, it was completely dark. The one good thing about this though, is that I was joined by a rather curious emu next to my tent. Overall, I thought Broken Hill and its surroundings was a really interesting place, and I really enjoyed spending my time here.